Internet protocol, IP, address, seems like such a small thing. In today's interconnected world, we just take them for granted until you want to connect with millions of new customers in India or you want to bid on that government contract that's a perfect fit for your application or you want to expand your network and can't find the IP space. Then this little thing becomes a big deal. It becomes a key to enabling your business. That's what IPv6 is about. I'm Eric Lance from the Azure networking team, and I'm the program manager for IPv6 in Azure. And I've got some good news to share with you today. But first, I want to turn up the Wayback Machine here. And how many of you recognize this sound? That is the sweet lullaby of my home computer connecting with the world, circa 1985. In those days, we connected at 300 baud, and we all used an IPv4 address. It seemed like there were so many of them. The, uh, that was before we had a computer on every desktop and in every home. You remember that? And certainly few of us foresaw a computer in every pocket. My wife and I went to an appliance store recently, and in the refrigerator section, they had a, uh, information for each of the refrigerators on their connectivity, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. <laughs> yes, we live in a world where refrigerators routinely have IP addresses now. And yet, we, the world, are out. The last IPv4 block was assigned in November 2018, a year ago this month. Um, and like with any scarce resource, people started to innovate. For IPs, this meant ever more Byzantine network address translation schemes, usually. And like any scarce resource, people started to barter. A single slash 10 IPv4 range can go today for tens of millions of dollars. What I wouldn't give to somehow communicate that to my 1985 self. And the price continues to rise. I know this because like many corporations, Microsoft is constantly scouring, looking for these ranges. But there is another way. Internet Protocol version 6. IPv6 has many shining parts. But the part of v6 that's, that's most attractive for most folks, a part that shines like a beacon in a weary routing world, is a virtually inexhaustible supply of IP addresses. And the world is taking notice. Our friends at Cisco tell us that fully one third of the US internet users, browsers, prefer IPv6 today. And even more telling, over half of the content of the US internet is now IPv6 accessible. The projections are for over 9 billion IPv6 capable mobile devices in the next couple of years. And the trends worldwide are the same. IPv6 use is on the rise. And this is the exciting part for me. I'm happy to announce that IPv6 for Azure Internet, or Azure VNets, is now available in all public cloud regions worldwide with GA assurances coming in the end of this month for your production workloads. Let me tell you a little bit about this new feature set and how it can help you. 
Let's start with the IPv6 ranges themselves. When you create a dual stack VNet in Azure, you decide what those v6 ranges will be. The ranges that work best for your application, for your customers, eventually for connecting back to your on-premise environments. Second, IPv6 in Azure is native IPv6 from the internet down to the routers in our racks. There's no NAT64, there's no translation, it's just native IPv6. And with this new feature set, IPv6 in Azure VNets, IPv6 becomes a, uh, gets first class support in the Azure VNets. That means that network security group rules can include v6 rules to protect your resources. And uh, user defined routing can be set up just for v6 within your networks. We understand that connectivity back to your on-prem via v6 is also very important. And that work is well underway. As you can see, this is a, a roadmap item for uh, 2020 for us. And the work is, as I mentioned, well underway. Another note is that that DDoS protection, the denial of service protection that's in place in Azure today for v4, also applies to all of your v6 resources. So any of your v6 public endpoints that are attacked will be automatically mitigated 24-7, just like v4. In addition to the vNet features, there's also a full slate of IPv6 load balancing available. Support for standard and basic load balancers for external load balancing that provides connectivity to the internet, and internal load balancing for multi-tiered applications, for load balancing within your VNet. Of course, there are IPv6 public IPs if you need to have internet connectivity in your VNet, and even ranges of IPv6 addresses, prefixes, that you can have assigned to your uh, subscription and you can use as you will. That makes it a lot easier to do logging and uh, set up on-premises firewall rules um, when you're uh, working from a, a, a known set of IPv6 addresses. As you can see, we have portal support as we look at this uh, dual stack NIC configuration. But perhaps the most interesting feature is what I call easy to try. With Azure, with IPv6 for Azure VNets, you can add v6 to an existing IPv4 deployment. No deletion, no redeploy. You just add v6 connectivity and give it a try. And if you don't like it, you can take it back off again. No harm, no foul. Now what does this look like for real? Well, deploying IPv6 is really not difficult. It's done in four simple steps. First, we add IPv6 ranges to the VNet and the subnet. Then we add IPv6 security rules to protect the resources in the VNet. And finally, we add an IPv6 IP configuration to the NIC to provide IPv6 connectivity that we need. Now, what does all this look like in real life? This is a resource group into which I've deployed a bunch of IPv6 resources. And we'll go through this in the same order that we just talked through them. The first thing we do is set up our virtual network. And as you can see here, we have IPv4 and IPv6 addresses assigned from the same dual stack subnet to a couple of different virtual machines in our VNet. The next thing we did was add network security group rules. Now some of the rules are IP agnostic. They apply to v4 and v6. But as you can see down here, we've got one that, that is uh, v6 specific. It's allowing traffic 
from one of my v6 subnets to a specific set of IPv6 targets out on the internet for a specific range of ports. Now, optionally, we can also set up a load balancer. And as we look at the load balancer's front end configuration, we see that it has an IPv4 and an IPv6 address. The back end pools are our two virtual machines back there with their v4 and v6 addresses. There's a health probe that's applied to both rules here, v4 and v6, that uh, signals back to the load balancer if one of the VMs becomes unhealthy or unresponsive and starts shedding load from that to the healthy VMs that are in the pool. And then we have load balancing rules, in this case just plumbing port 80 through for our IPv6 application. Now, everything you see here in this little example is available as samples to download. If you go to your favorite search engine, mine happens to be Bing, and you type Azure IPv6 VNet, but this works with other search engines also, you'll see that the very first thing that comes up is all the information about IPv6 in Azure. All the features, capabilities, as well as links out to more detailed documentation and the samples that we've just seen. So, all of this feature set and ease of use didn't happen in a vacuum. We had a lot of help and guidance. And perhaps our closest partner, the most patient guide through all this, has been, have been the folks at iTron. iTron are an IoT company that helps cities use energy, electricity, and water more efficiently. Because of the sheer number of devices and sensors that iTron work with, IPv6 is a foundational part of their architecture. They validate every piece of software and firmware, uh, every software and firmware upgrade in Azure before it goes out to the tens of millions of devices in the field for their customers. In fact, they have a simulator that can run up to five and a half million simultaneous IPv6 devices in Azure, all clamoring to report their data simultaneously to the collection engine at the, in the bottom right-hand corner here, and then on up to their data platform. I think Greg Richards, a senior VP and techni um, uh, technology and research at iTron really said it the best when he said, iTron worked closely with Azure's networking team for over a year on this project, collaborating on the development of the IPv6 feature set and proving out added functionality within our system environments. We've gone, grown to value and trust the stability and reliability of IPv6 in Azure. As we look to expand our cloud-based portfolio and offer additional services for the 65 million IoT devices we manage worldwide, IPv6 capability is a key enabler for adapting our IoT framework to the cloud. Thank you, Greg. A critical part of the iTron infrastructure is highlighted here. It's a Cisco cloud services router. This is the network virtual appliance that connects iTron's cloud infrastructure to on-prem Cisco devices at their customer sites. And I'm very happy to also announce that the Cisco CSR1000V now supports IPv6 in Azure. It's a fully functional 
a full functioned router virtual appliance in Azure. The iTron folks use it to IPsec tunnel between the cloud and their on-premises uh, installations at their customer sites. But it can do, it has a lot of features. And I recommend that you go to the uh, Azure Marketplace and check out the full specs on the, on the CSR if you're interested in using IPv6. Now, I promised some party tricks and ways to amaze your friends. In the interest of time, I won't go through all of these. I'll just focus on the lower right. In IPv6, when you deploy IPv6 into a network, and those of you who've done this on-prem, you know that normally you'll deploy in units of a slash 64. We have slash 64 subnets on our routers, on servers, here, there, everywhere. There's thousands of them in the network. If we take one of those slash 64s, just one of them, that's enough addresses for each person on the earth to have two and a half billion addresses to themselves. Another way to think about that is they could, everybody on the earth, each of us, could go out and buy seven million smartphones every day for a year, and we would use up just a single slash 64. The IPv6 address space is truly enormous. Now, IPv6 is a journey. Goodness knows it's been a journey. And will continue to be. IPv6 for Azure VNets is a fundamental step for Azure. It's the foundation for IPv6 upon which many other features will be built. We've already talked about the need for express route connectivity to on-prem networks to support v6, and that's, as we mentioned, a, a roadmap item. We've also had customers talk to us about uh, IPv6 for containers, and we realize that's important. Also, IPv6 for Azure platform services like storage and SQL. While with a dual stack virtual machine, it's possible to get at all of these services today over the v4 endpoint. Certainly, there are circumstances, scenarios, where v6 accessibility of these uh, services directly is important. And we're working on that with those teams. So IPv6 for Azure VNets is a significant feature set, but more to come. Now, if you take nothing away from my blathering on today, I'm hoping you'll remember three things. The first is that IPv6 has been supported for production workloads in Azure for over three years. It's stable and reliable. The second is that we've just released a significant new set of IPv6 functionality, IPv6 for Azure VNets, that enables you to build production quality dual stack applications in Azure. And lastly, I hope you'll try it out. We have sample JSON templates, sample PowerShell, sample command line interface that let you deploy exactly the, the dual stack VNet with two VMs, a load balancer, network security group rules to give you a realistic starter deployment, something you can really work from. All of that's available today. And your field resources, please don't be shy about, about contacting them about v6. If whatever they don't know off the top of their heads, they will pull in myself and the team, and we will help you be successful with v6. That is our job. That's our mission. So this is a 20-minute presentation, and I'm right at 20 minutes. So I want to thank you for spending your very valuable Ignite time with me. I will be here to answer as many questions as possible. If you can't stay today, I am very, very often at the Azure networking booth, which is right behind us here. So over the next three days, you'll likely be able to find me there as well. Um, but thank you again for your time and your patience today. <laughs>